Okay, so text to video AI is going to play a large part in the future of content creation. But right now, its biggest strengths kind of look like this. As a content creator, this terrifies me, but as a tech nerd, I'm fascinated and I wanted to know more. So here are five video AI tools that you should know about right now. I'm Becca, welcome back to Full Frame. The goal of text-to-video AI is to be able to type a prompt into a text field and within seconds, or more likely minutes, a video will be created using an AI model. Some of the biggest companies in tech are researching this. Meta announced Make a Video, Google has announced Imagine Video and Fanaki, and NVIDIA says it's getting involved too. None of those programs are currently available for public use, but they all share the common goal of creating video via text prompts. And at this point, the output of these systems is far from photorealistic. Figures warp and morph, and there are obvious changes between frames. But the demos are public statements of research and development in the text-to-video field from large and powerful companies. And seeing that our world is increasingly filled with video content, it makes a lot of sense that the next step in AI research is creating moving images. If you want to try one of these out right now and start practicing prompting AI to make video, well, the best one I've found is Runway's Gen 2. Gen 2 attempts to create four second video clips from text prompts using a diffusion model. And in its current state, the program creates dystopian worlds filled with objects blurring together and oddly moving humans whose limbs morph and change. But to Gen 2's credit, the program is attempting to create more realistic video from scratch instead of just applying a filter to existing content. This is only the first of Runway's text-to-video tools that are available to the public, so we can expect to see a lot of growth in later generations. After a free 125 credit trial, Gen 2 costs $15 to $35, depending on the plan you choose, and it's based on a credit system. It's easy to see how someday you'll be able to create really visually stunning stories using just text prompts, but currently, most of the AI tools that are available they do stuff more like this. This is Kaber. So while Gen 2 is creating video completely from scratch, Kaber typically relies on photos or videos being uploaded and then a sort of filter or artistic look being then applied to it. Upload a photo or video alongside a text prompt, which the program can walk you through making, then set some video parameters. After that, the program will spit out four different looks to base a larger animation off of. If you're not so happy with it, you can go back and tune your prompt, but once you decide on a final look, the program will spit out an animation that spirals and funnels into ever-changing art styles based on the input. When manipulating a photo, these changing styles create a sense of motion, but when used on a video, it feels more like an applied filter. You can also use the program without source footage, relying completely on text, but in my use, the program still spits out still images that cycle through artistic looks rather than actual motion of objects. For example, I wasn't able to prompt the system using text to make a man walk. Instead, it creates motion by changing the style of objects or people. With this, you can piece a story together anime style, but I hope later versions will allow for more movements of subjects through the frame. Kaber offers a seven day free trial with 60 credits, but then charges anywhere from $5 to $30 a month, depending on how many features you wanna have access to or however many credits you want. The company claims the system has been created for artists by artists and is not meant to replace creativity. I take that claim with a grain of salt because there is no doubt in my mind that programs like this and all of the other ones in this video are going to take jobs away from creativity or animators. What I will give Kaber credit for though is that their look is incredibly unique and very hard to look away from. Let's take a moment to talk about the terms and conditions you have to sign to use most of these programs. In many of these agreements, you are giving a service the rights to whatever you upload and create with its tools. Not to mention all of the data that you are giving the program by using it. You know, you might be just editing a fun photo, but you don't know what that program could be used for in the future. There's also a lot of questions around where these models got their data in the first place. You know, recently Reddit raised its API pricing in an attempt to fight back against AI companies freely using its content, and Getty is suing Stability AI after its image generators were caught outputting images with Getty-like watermarks. And then there's the whole big question about what AI tools are being asked to create. In the US, very little has been done to regulate AI. 
Whereas in China and in the EU, steps are already being taken to regulate who can use AI and what they can use it for. I had trouble justifying making this video because it gives a platform to companies and programs that you know, we don't know what they're fully capable of. But I do believe it's really important as a creator and as a human to understand what tools are out there, to, to educate ourselves on these things that will inevitably be woven into almost everything we do. So with that, here's some more tools that can be used to manipulate video. My Heritage is an online genealogy platform, but it recently added this neat trick. It's called Deep Nostalgia, and it's licensed by an AI company called DID. A program like this is typically trained using pre-recorded videos of facial movements, and then the algorithm analyzes an uploaded face and applies a movement that best matches that face. Subjects smile or tilt their head slightly to create this illusion of video. In its current state, Deep Nostalgia does not allow text prompts to be put in, but I could see a future generation adding those things. I could also see this being used in documentaries instead of like that Ken Burns effect where photos kind of like move all over the frame. You know, instead they'll just be coming to life. There's a free 14 day trial or it's $129 annually after that, which reminds me, I have to cancel my subscription. The next video AI tool is having computer-generated avatars say prompted text. There's a site called Synthesia that is really aimed towards more of the corporate marketplace, you know, making those IT videos where they tell you like, don't look at the doc. But I wanted to include it because although in its current state, the avatars are obviously computer-generated. Hello, sales team. Today, I am excited to introduce our latest product, the Max Pro Industrial Machine. There is a future where we see this type of video often. Unfortunately, every time I submitted text to this program, it never sent me the video file into my email like it had promised. So I don't recommend you use Synthesia for yourself, but it is important to know that these programs exist and someday will be available for public use. Lastly, there is Unboring by the AI company Reface. Unboring allows users to apply artistic filters and animate photos, much like all of the programs I've already spoken about, but then also offers face swapping. Simply upload a photo, video, or GIF of one face, and then the same of the face you want to swap it with, and, well, within seconds, you have a swapped video. Without upgrading, the video is a bit grainy, but I don't know, my, my boss Viren was able to tell that I put Tom Warren's face, who's a, another senior reporter here at The Verge, on mine, and well, the whole process, man, it is really easy and it is really accessible, which just shows you how crazy and honestly spooky this technology has gotten. Unboring has a free five token per two days trial and then costs 50 cents per token if you pay as you go, or about 10 cents per token with a monthly subscription plan. AI will create new art forms and it will definitely burn others to the ground. So where do you stand on it? Let me know down below. Um, personally, I started this piece because I'm working on a larger piece about content creators in the AI era. And I wanted to know what tools were out there. I wanted to know how to use them, what capabilities anybody with internet access has. I mean, the tools that we have available allow a lot of people to make really wonderful things and allow other folks to make incredibly damaging things. So it's important to educate yourself on this. Um, it's important to use these tools. Um, and let me know down below. Where do you stand? Thanks, buds. I'll see you in the next one.